just an absolute privilege and an honor to uh, be asked by IHS to, uh, to introduce my, one of my most respected colleagues and dear friends, Dr. Peter Diadamo. Translated, that means I am the guy that gets to embarrass him before we give him an award. So looking forward to that. So Peter Diadamo, like all of us, once upon a time, Peter had great hair, like both quantitatively and qualitatively. And if you look at the other picture, he's already a voracious reader of, of scientific works. You can see the book on the ground. He had already acquired his fine taste in very fashionable footwear. Um, but judging by uh, the can and the fork, he was not yet eating right for his type. But he soon learned a lot of principles that went into formulating uh, how he was going to eat in the future when he was actually in the first graduating class of the Bastyr College of Naturopathic Medicine. Um, and uh, it was quite a class. Uh, there were other people in that class, Dr. Walter Crinian, who we lost a few years ago, but was very, very impactful in the profession, um, and, and just other uh, really um, influential people in, in the profession, but none greater than Peter. Um, Peter's mentors there included Joe Pizzorno, um, Bill Mitchell, I believe, um, and uh, John, Dr. Bastier himself. But Peter was really ultimately influenced by his father, Dr. James Iadamo, who was trained both as a chiropractic physician and a naturopathic doctor, um, trained and practiced in New York, uh, then Toronto, and then I believe in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, uh, traveled extensively uh, to improve his craft and learn uh, many cutting edge things, including uh, uh, studying with a lot of European mentors and really uh, started getting into concepts that were really a, ahead of their time. And that uh, certainly rubbed off on Peter. Uh, Peter's father was a great influence on him, but Peter himself is just a, uh, he's a, he's a thinker. He's someone who thinks outside of the envelope. He doesn't just go learn something from somebody and then do it. He pushes things forward and he thinks of new possibilities. Um, and that started very, very young. And ultimately, you probably first became aware of Peter Diadamo with his groundbreaking New York Times bestseller, Eat Right For Your Type, which first published, I believe, in 1996. However, there have been many, many, many books in this series uh, in, in various iterations, related topics of, of really what, what is now known as glycomics, and uh, multiple New York Times bestsellers and in fact, uh, but by the way, you may know, obviously you know, let's see if I can go in reverse, of the Eat Right For Your Type book. And I always tell people when I talk about Peter uh, to them that you probably know him from the Eat Right For Your Type book. And yeah, and they say, yeah, I know that. But he's so much more than that. And it always irked me that people didn't know how much more there was to Peter Diadamo than the Eat Right For Your Type book. Not that that wasn't a great thing, but he's just, uh, he, he's a renaissance guy. He's, he just does it all. And I'm going to show you a couple of uh, examples of that. And while this was the book for the lay public, and some healthcare providers, I think, read this book and said it's interesting concepts, but it, it's, it's overly simplified or whatever. Well, yeah, it wasn't written for doctors. It was written for the lay person to make them kind of understand some concepts of personalized eating before that was even a known thing. Very few healthcare providers went on, though, and then read Eat Right for Your Type, the complete book, uh, Blood Type Encyclopedia, where it goes into the down and dirty scientific minutia of what is now known as glycomics and how blood type has a big influence on whether you get a disease or not, what kind of cancer you got. And guess what? Your blood type and secretor status was a major determinant on whether you got COVID-19 or not and whether you died from it or not. Okay, so he was 20 years or more ahead of his time on this, but now glycomics is the big thing, right? I mean, it's past metabolomics, it's past proteomics, it's past lipidomics, it's past genomics. It actually potentially is even more influential. And Peter was just ahead of the curve. And when you think of the prolific authors and the people who've really brought the concepts 
of whether you want to call it functional medicine, integrative medicine, naturopathic medicine, integrative nutrition, wellness, all of these things um, that kind of fall under that umbrella. Peter's the author. He's the king, right? He, these are just some of his books on the table written all over the world. They're translated into 70 different languages. So Peter's done amazing work at bringing the message of really fundamentally what we do in certain niches and things, but the whole just general concept of wellness, of personalization uh, in, in how you take care of yourself, how you eat, and the lifestyle choices you make. Um, Peter's really done amazing work, uh, and he should be uh, uh, given awards for doing that. He's, he's made our job easier. This is translated even you know, direct to the consumer, not only through the books, but this is one of his storefronts. Um, I, this is in Brooklyn, Peter, is he down there? I, it's in Brooklyn? It was in Brooklyn, yeah. But, you know, Peter, as I said, he's a thinker. This, this is Peter's first computer. I'm, I'm only kidding, actually. Peter's first computer is probably older than that, right? You probably built it out of a magazine or something and were coding your own DOS language or something at the time. It was your second computer, okay. Uh, Peter thinks in networks. Uh, he's... He really doesn't look at things, you know, through a very myopic lens, right, down a tunnel. He's not reductionist. He's very broad in his thinking. He thinks in networks, and he thinks in how things all relate to one, one another. And he's brought that into things like his groundbreaking software program or med medical informatics platform, I should say, Opus 23. And some of you may use Opus 23. Um, it really is a, a novel and powerful way to you know, take SNP data or genomic data, people and make sense of it uh, in, in a million different ways. You can slice it and dice it and chew it up and look, look at things through network mapping and, and, and a lot of uh, really creative ways that Opus does this. And Peter coded Opus. Peter's a master computer programmer. So he's a, he's a great doctor, he's a great clinician. He knows all of that domain, but then he can dream up these tools like we would go, boy, wouldn't it be nice if I had a dashboard that I can just do this and this and find this data and find that data and connect this lab to that symptom and, and do sort of a Dr. Watson like differential diagnostic algorithm. Peter thinks of that stuff and then he writes the code and makes it happen, right? That's really cool. So while Opus 23 is probably the program or the informatics platform that people most know of Peter for with uh, the work in genomics, he has many, many more. And Opus 23 is, is a brilliant um, platform. It goes out and spiders PubMed and many different um, databases in the medical literature and accesses a lot of the major metadata sets to come up with the different connections and conclusions that it can for you that we would never be able to do in our head. All right, so if you, if you don't know about it, check it out. In my talk tomorrow at 1.30, it's sort of a multi-omics talk, I'm gonna talk about how you might use platforms like Opus 23 to, uh, to solve some issues in very complex patients. And data's, uh, uh, Peter's kind of company that oversees the medical informatics uh, part is called Datapunk, and Datapunk has a website. You can check it out, see some of these tools. For instance, Utopia is the microbiome equivalent of Opus, for, of Opus 23 in genomics. And there's metabolomics platforms, there's dietary platforms, and many more things that I, that I don't have time to mention today, but it's pretty amazing stuff. So when we were looking to try to up the game in the ability of naturopathic medical students and our graduate clinical nutrition students at the University of Bridgeport, to be able to deal with this new informatics world in medicine, the obvious choice to turn to was to Peter. And at that time, Peter also was looking to really start sharing his knowledge and to mentor young naturopathic physicians in particular in how to face these challenges and really be sort of the doctor of the future the way he envisioned it. So um, we worked together and brought uh, a center of excellence that furthered Peter's work to the university, and it was called the Center of Excellence in Generative Medicine. And the term generative medicine, notice I didn't say regenerative medicine, I said generative medicine, and it means something different. And perhaps when Peter's up doing his lecture, he can kind of define that for you and what it means, because it does have a distinct meaning. But here we are kind of looking at this beautiful Victorian 
kind of old house that was across the street from like the seven story big, you know, public clinic building at the university to make it into sort of a micro center of excellence doing this precision, personalized, multi-omics uh, type of approach. And we ultimately accomplished that. And Peter spent many years there training the next generation of naturopathic physicians uh, and tutoring them and mentoring them one-on-one, -on -one, seeing patients and uh, teaching classes and doing a lot of things that he frankly did not have to do. It was really a very altruistic um, uh, endeavor on his part. We thank him for that. And he was commencement speaker at our health sciences uh, graduations, and he just touched a lot of people in that realm. His work was uh, featured in a really nice article in the Townsend Letter on the Center of Excellence in Generative Medicine, which has now been taken private um, and still exists in, uh, in Connecticut. And in the Townsend Letter, Peter, I don't know if you, how many of you may have been reading this, but he had a, a, uh, an ongoing column, uh, Generativity, which uh, he talked about using bioinformatics tools uh, in COVID-19 and many other conditions. And one of the first webinars that was done after the pandemic broke in the functional integrative medicine realm was actually Peter, myself, and Todd Lapine, we may have one, had one other person on that, really starting to chew up what was really out there in the worldwide medical literature that we can use in our toolbox. And we found a lot of stuff, right? And then we started, it started being sort of a proving ground for our medicine, really, that um, the stuff that we had been using all along is what was showing was actually doing amazing things uh, during the outbreak. Peter's into bugs. He shows lots of pictures of insects on his Facebook page, and they're really compelling. They're really cool. But uh, in addition to those bugs, Peter's into these kind of bugs. He's, and, and the interest goes way back. Um, so here's Peter today in his shop in Bridgeport. He restores old Volkswagens and air-cooled vehicles of various sorts. And uh, he's really become a master at that. So anything he kind of sets his mind to, he gets really darn good at. And uh, I've been over to Peter's shop uh, many times. I'm a bit of an air-cooled car enthusiast myself. I like my Volkswagens on steroids, though. They're known as Porsches. But um, Peter likes Volkswagens. And this is his shop here. And I have to say, other than you know being with his family and stuff, this makes Peter happier than anything, as far as I can see. You can follow Peter and his restoration of, of these crushed up cars and Volkswagens with trees growing through them that he rescues from some field and then makes a beautiful car again uh, on his website here, um, if you want to. And uh, it's, I always thought it was interesting. Peter's this kind of digi really digitally, technologically savvy kind of cat, but he's into mechanical things. He's got to get his hands in the oil and make the gears work again. And, and I, I resonate with that because I'm a bit the same way. I always wear an analog watch, even though everything else is digital. And Peter also has now become very skilled over the years at rebuilding old clocks and time movements and watches and things like that. He just out of the blue sent my wife an old Soviet era watch that was entirely restored. And I think the note he put in it was, it doesn't keep great time. No, it's something like it's typically Russian. It doesn't keep the perfect time, but it takes a beating, right? Or <laughs> this is Peter's wife, Martha. And the best part about getting to know Peter over the years was actually getting to know Martha. Um, I've described Peter in many ways to people. And when, whenever we were trying to take one of his crazy ideas um, and commercialize it so that more people like you can use it, to help patients, um, I would tell people we were working with that would meet Peter, and I would say, There's just, here's how I would often describe Peter. Peter's the smartest guy I know, but Martha's the brains of that operation, right? So, so if you gotta get something done practically, you gotta go to Martha and she'll make it happen. Um, and one of the things I think is kind of neatest thing about Peter, if I have to think about him, is he refers to Martha all the time as girlfriend on social media and all these different things. And I just think it's sweet. It just shows a lot about Peter and their relationship. And I think it's cool. And of course, Peter's other loves. Uh, these are uh, Peter's daughter, 
daughters here, Emily on the left, Claudia on the right. And just like Peter's father influenced him in his choice of career, um, obviously Peter influenced them. So uh, Emily graduated in the uh, most recent or last class of the uh, University of Bridgeport College of Naturopathic Medicine and is furthering his work uh, in, uh, in our field. And um, Claudia is a software programmer, right? So it's perfect. They just, they split them in half and now they're gonna do better things in those realms. So this is me and Peter at, I think it was two, two years ago, 20, 21, I don't know. It was at the Connecticut Naturopathic Physicians Association and we were both getting like career awards, uh, which means we're old guys and they're trying to get rid of us and the new, new ones have to come in. But we were both getting these career achievement awards in naturopathic medicine in the state of Connecticut. And this was me, I'm sure, telling Peter that we're tied now in these awards. And this is Peter's face knowing that he's gonna surpass me very quickly. And, uh, and that, that day is today. So I'm gonna end and bring Dr. Merrill back up to give the award, but I'm putting up this last picture here, which is my least favorite picture of Peter Diadamo. And given where we are, and just for the sake of decency, I'm gonna improve it. Okay. <laughs> 